This is our opening contest here on NCWA Labor Day weekend. In singles action, Maddie Ziegler takes on Kylie Ray. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ourselves prepared here for an extension of our weekend as this is Labor Day Monday. Happy Monday to all of y'all out there uh, who are watching this in the comfort of your very own home. My name is Rick Rocker. I am the uh, backstage correspondent, the senior correspondent, that is, of NCWA and, of course, of Fantasy Pro Wrestling. And these stars, ladies and gentlemen, are the future of um, not only ladies' championship wrestling, but for Fantasy Pro Wrestling as well. Indeed, Rick. As a matter of fact, we are now getting ourselves prepared for an up-and-comer. I mean, she's been in the business for a long time in the indies. Her name? is Kylie Ray, and she is gonna start 2024-25 uh, to be competing. Uh, as a matter of fact, if, 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 if those of you watching this right now at home, please check out our live streams. She, Kylie Ray, has been in the ring already with Dahlia Black and Jade Moonbow. These are incredible athletes. Kylie has already been competing in various promotions, such as AEW. I thought that she can make a great addition to the women's division, but alas, Kylie Ray has reportedly retired from pro wrestling. I can't believe that she would do such a thing. I mean, she is such a sensational athlete. She is pretty much like a Bailey 2.0. Back when she was uh, in her hugger phase and she was all colorful and, and friendly towards her peers and, of course, her fans. Well, let's get, let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen, right here in singles action. My, uh, Miley, Maddie Ziegler and Kylie Ray. <laughs> My, Miley, Miley Ziegler? Miley Ziegler and Maddie, and Maddie Ray. That's cool. <clears throat> all right, so... Ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned, I'll say it here, happy Labor Day weekend. It has been an incredible weekend filled with activities right here in beautiful Gatineau Park. We had the uh, the Festival de Montgolfière, and apparently the closing, the closing day is today, ladies and gentlemen. So enjoy the last moments of the beautiful fresh air the sunlight, everything, but if you're watching this at home, it's probably in the evening, it's probably at night, you're about to go to bed, who knows, maybe you're watching this in the afternoon, or you're having, or you're watching, as you're having supper, you're watching this, who knows, but thank you anyways for joining and tuning into our program. Almost a three count there, we've never seen Maddie Ziegler get pinned, Nar submit legitimately inside the square circle. That is true, ladies and gentlemen. This past summer at uh, the 2024 Coastal Clash event, Hadley Hope, one of our one of our re recent graduate students from last year's um, uh, set, she forced Maddie Ziegler into submission from her trademark uh, guillotine choke. Uh, couldn't believe him. Maddie Ziegler actually tapped out, but it was outside the ring, which was not sanctioned, is not legal. The referee did not count, uh, did not call for the bell. The match had continued, Rick, and even then, Maddie Ziegler was able to pick up the win and retain the LCW wor World Championship. Well, that was definitely something to see, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, that is available for your viewing pleasure on YouTube. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe, click on notifications so you do not miss a match. Share the link down below to all your friends. 
your family, and anybody associated with Eat Federation. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry to cut you off there, Rick. Alexa Bliss at the Academy. Someone's playing her music. Oh, look at this. Oh, elbow strike from Maddie Ziegler. Maddie picks up Carly. Oh, my lord, what a brain buster. She's going for the cover. One, two, uh, no. Even Maddie Ziegler can't believe it. That was, an, that was a, a superb brain buster. I don't think she's ever done that in the, uh, even on, on, on the main card. Oh! Oh, she's definitely done. That's the TKO, ladies and gentlemen. In the center of the ring. One, two, three. Well, your winner for tonight is Maddie Ziegler, the current reigning LCW World Champion. Check out this highlight reel, ladies and gentlemen. It seemed as though that Kylie Ray had the victory, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this great wrestling. Elbow smash across the face, setting up for a beautiful brain buster. It looks so painful. You can see that Kylie is feeling it. Her back, her spine, her neck must be completely damaged. But yet, there it is. The TKO for the victory. That ought to do it, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, and there's the three. Our winner. And this was a non-title match situation. Have you noticed that Maddie did not bring the LCW World Championship? Reason being, it is completely a standalone product compared to the NCWA. Maddie Ziggler, a former student, now here to train with the young ones. And this is our end result, ladies and gentlemen. Maddie Ziegler wins the contest. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, triple threat wrestling action with Ultimo Dragon, Alex Shelley, and Bandido. And that music, ladies and gentlemen, reminds me of Alex Shelley when he was in Total Non-Stop Action during the paparazzi uh, saga, if you will, in his career. Alex Shelley, ladies and gentlemen, is, a, is more than just a student. He is like the epitome of what a professional wrestler should be. Look at his look. He has the rock star image. And wrestling was at one point known for its rock star-ness. Oh my goodness. This is Ultimo Dragon, a wrestling legend in Japan, in Mexico, in WCW and on the WWE. This man has done it all, and he's even wrestled in Auto Ontario for one of the C4 fighting back uh, 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 and here comes our third opponent, ladies and gentlemen. Make no mistake of who he is. He is the Bandido. He's a very dangerous hombre. All because of his technique inside and outside the ring. He is absolutely technical, but he will also hurt you in the squared circle. And look at that. Covering his entire face. We don't even know what he looks like under that match. Even before this match, even before this show even went on the air, he would not want to reveal his face. The bell sounds and we are underway. Each match is about 15 minutes. We forgot we had failed to tell the audience exactly the time limit of the script. Every, every match is about 15 minutes. That includes tag team wrestling action. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, Johnny is motioning to me that the tag team matches are 30 minutes. That also applies to the, uh, I guess you can say, the, um, 
the other class, the other new class uh, um, that we have going on, that you will get to see live stream on this channel, ladies and gentlemen, the Loud and Clear Pictures YouTube channel. And you can check out all the Red All action. We're talking about Ryan Rich as our heavyweight champion, Aki Woman as the uh, women's champion, and the oh, another, another wrestling legend, Hooven 2 Guerrero as our lat heavyweight champion. You know, we still have yet to decide what's going to happen with the tag team championships because we do understand that on the WWF No Mercy platform, Edge and Christian by default are the tag champions. Absolutely. That's why, if you had seen our graduation show, it is clear to me that Scott Sampson and Tom Sever, the team of Guts and Glory, they are the ones next on deck for those tag team championship belts. And if you get this done, it's going to be an historic moment because both Scott Sampson and Tom Sever have never won tag team championship gold. And if you had seen the round robin tournament progress, at some point, Tom Sever suffered a legitimate injury. It was very, very tragic by a name we just cannot mention in this program because he has been not only suspended, he is now banned from the academy for life. But I digress. Tom Sever has been away from in-ring competition for some time, and Scott had to pick up the scraps and carry on in the tag team round robin tournament. And if I can say this, in spite of the two losses, as he had to compete by himself, he still managed to defeat Hector Ramirez and Juancho Gonzalez, the Latin American Express, alone and by himself. That was an incredible feat from Scott Sampson, ladies and gentlemen, indeed. And the fact is that also Scott is next on deck for the heavyweight championship. All this will be revealed on Tuesday, September 17th. There will be an ad campaign about it. There will be mentioned to the audience, to the viewers, to those who have subscribed and have been notified, you will get an update on your phones, your, 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 your computers, any kind of electronic device, you will hear from us at the, in fantasy pro wrestling, especially management. So now, ladies and gentlemen, this is, as I mentioned, a triple threat, one fall to a finish. There is no elimination in this contest. We are featuring some of the greatest athletes in our light heavyweight or cruiserweight division, depending on what you want to call it. Some people call it the junior heavyweights. I say light heavyweight and I say cruiserweight, mostly because of their technical maneuvers. They're also much smaller athletes compared to the big boys, like the Braun, Stone, uh, the Braun Strowmans, the big Goldbergs, the uh, Roman Reigns. I can go on forever, but in here, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Shelley, Ultimo Dragon with a beautiful running ladder bomb. I'm surprised he didn't go over the pin. And that was an incredible drop kick from Bandito. Another drop kick from Bandito. Goes with the cover, the count, and Alex kicks out a two. Well, why, oh, why is Ultimo Dragon, why did, why did he roll out of the ring like this? I mean, how is this going to help the situation? Look at the action inside the ring, Bandito. Swerve and a beautiful DDT on Alex Shelley. Ultimo Dragon is missing out on all this amazing action. He could be there to break over. Oh, there he is. My goodness, he is that damn quick. He is indeed quick, Rick. He is a legend uh, in this sport. Ultimo Dragon, Yoshihiro Asai. This man, I'm telling you, has won many championships, including the WCW Cruiserweight Championship of the World. About nine and a half minutes remaining on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Shelley looks pretty poised 
pretty confident. A bump and feed sequence with Ultimo Dragon. Look at this reverse Irish whip. It's just back and forth of counter reversals. Amazing uh, striking, striking techniques as well. Alex Shelley's got Ultimo Dragon. Oh my lord. And just drops him down. Right in front of Bandito. Referee counts on one, two. Oh my goodness. That was two and nine tenths. Well, Bandito now is going to have to seize the moment, seize the opportunity because, as you said, Rick, he was just standing there watching as he's in pain in this whole battle. Look at that beautiful drop kick. That's got to leave a sting on your shoulders, on your oval plaits. It's got to leave something on your And in these triple threat matches, ladies and gentlemen, there is no count out and apparently no disqualification. It's kind of like a hardcore match, but not necessarily. You can't bring out a weapon. I mean, if you bring out a weapon, I guess, that would make you seem like a coward. And in, and in this ring, ladies and gentlemen, the correction of wrestlers in this ring, there's no counts. Look at that beautiful Tornado DDT in the center of the ring. Bandito going to the cover. And Ultimo Dragon had to hurt himself to break up that pin. Well, Bandito now trying to figure things out here and wasting way too much time. Oh, look at this. I'm Matt. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Alex. And we're the Retro Canucks. Hello everybody and welcome to Retro Connects Media, where we'll take you back to the good old days of gaming. That's right Alex, we're going to take you back in time where video games had pixelated graphics and controllers had wires. Speaking of wires, try not to get all tangled up like our controllers as we navigate through classic games and try not to rage quit. What? This is what gaming was all about back in the day. Nintendo 64, the Nintendo NES, remember the Konami code? You don't remember any of that, you ungrateful pretzels. Whether it's saving princesses, or collecting coins, or not falling in a bit of pixelated doom, we've got you covered. So join us here at Retro Connects Media. The only thing more retro than our video games is our sense of humor. We're ready to entertain you! We are back for more wrestling action here in the NCWA Labor Day Weekend Extravaganza. And this is our triple threat one fall to a finish. Alex Shelley, Ultimo Dragon, and Bandito. Alex Shelley, a shotgun drop kick to Bandito in the corner. Looks like Ultimo Dragon wants to pick up the scraps and do some damage. Meanwhile, Alex Shelley is just celebrating a little bit too soon, young man. There's still a match going on, and you gotta pick up a you gotta pick up a win. Well, Bandito's on the outside floor. He once again, this man is not gonna get any leverage being outside the ring. There are two men inside. All it takes. Look at that, Sister Abigail Ray swinging reverse STO to. Oh my lord! Ultimo Dragon kicked out of two! This match continues on! There is still hope for Bandito! Alex Shelley now sending Dragon. Oh, look at this! Oh my goodness! There is a calamity 
a combination of strikes all over the place. Referee, look at the look at the look at the foot of Ultimate Dragon. Dragon's foot was under the ropes. The referee did not even see it. That is a that is a, a, a legitimate rope break. Bandido now. Tornado DDT. Oh! Using the top rope as a weapon, ladies and gentlemen. That was beautiful. And now Bandido. Oh, my lord. Beautiful powerbomb on Alex Shelley. Two and. Oh! Kick out, but look at Bandido. He still has Shelley in his grasp. Ultimo Dragon, I think he was trying to get between the referee and Bandito. And now these two masked men. One from Tokyo, Japan, and one from Mexico. They are coming. Look at this. Beautiful Asai DDT hooking the legs. And that's all she wrote. Ultimo Dragon. The legend in Japan. The legend in Mexico has survived and has won this incredible triple threat wrestling match. You can see from this highlight reel, ladies and gentlemen, these guys went all out. This is what our cruiserweight or light heavyweight division has to offer to you fans, to you loyal fans watching this at home. So many, so many near falls, but at the end of the day, Ultimo Dragon is the victor in our Triple Threat contest here. He has already done so much in this business, yet he still has a lot to offer, especially 1D becoming Black Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. It's going to happen one day, uh, Johnny. I I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to waste any more time. We still have a whole lot more wrestling action, so let's get to it. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, in women's action, Dahlia Black takes on Siren. Yeah, keep it 100. You know, I'm gonna tell you something, Johnny. Our women's division never ceases to amaze. And why? Because every every bit of talent that we have, men and women, they always go out here and they always perform at a hundred percent. I keep I, I wanna find out as a viewer, but also as an advocate for professional wrestling, I wanna see if there are any glitches any mistakes, any mishaps to each of these uh, matches that we have here in the academy. Well, we definitely have some mishaps, Rick. I mean, every match is never going to be perfect. There will be a time or two or three or four or maybe even ten times during a match where there might be a little bit of a mishap. I mean, these things happen. Check out Botchamania on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. That's still a thing. You can see there's tons and tons of mistakes, and that's perfectly normal. Wrestling is an art, and wrestling is an art that has always been a need for perfection. It will never get to perfection, but it's the pursuit, Rick. The pursuit that these wrestlers put in this day in and day out here at the Academy, and especially on the main roster of Fantasy Pro Wrestling. And this, uh, this lovely young woman here, her name is Siren, and she's going up against Dahlia Black, who had already made her main roster debut last week here on FPW Championship Wrestling. That is now available for your viewing pleasure on YouTube. All right, the bell sounds. We're going to get down to business. And look at that beautiful DDT. Did you see that? Siren. Just executed that DDT, exploded that, and allowing Dahlia Black to leave the ring to to get to, to, to get her mind off of things, get her out of her own thoughts, and get back into the present moment. She's got a match with Siren 
who is an, who apparently is another technical prowess, another technical athlete that you need to keep your eyes on. Hunt face lock elbow smash to the back of the skull and earth and earth waking. Kind of a strike here, my lord. Siren now. With some kind of falcon arrow. That looked like a falcon arrow in half. To the turnbuckle. Dahlia Black now springing into a body press. Beautiful maneuver right there. Off the ropes. And Dahlia Black now trying to contemplate, trying to think what she's got to do. Apparently that took the, that, that, that body press knocked the wind out of Siren. And now Siren is in deep waters here because her elbow strike did not do a thing. Oh my lord. A beautiful clothesline from Valley of Black sending Siren on the outside floor and our beloved referee Charles is doing a good job putting putting Valley of Black away. Listen to this crowd man. This is this is action. This is wrestling. This is performance from the new class wrestling academy. Great technical wrestling here from Valley of Black and for Siren. Siren once again onto the outside floor. And this gives great chances for both athletes to collect themselves, to, 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 to breathe, but also to get them to get themselves focused on the next move. Once again, Dahlia Black tosses. Is this what your idea is? Is this, is, is this them thinking about it? I think Dahlia Black wants this match over and done with. Dahlia getting on with the crowd, but Siren isn't looking too good. Dahlia Black on the top. Oh my lord! A, a missile drop kick, and it was right on target, but for some reason, the kick did not connect. Oh, stiff kick there from Siren. More kicks to the limbs of Dahlia Black. And now Siren went for a suplex. She got it. Textbook suplex from Siren. Now she's got control. Going for the cover. Puts her palm on the jaw of Dahlia Black and almost gets a two count. Ladies and gentlemen, this match might be over before you know it. And Dahlia Black is already on the main card or on the main roster. Beautiful corkscrew moonsault from Siren. Hey, this woman's got something going on here. Look at this. Cross arm breaker. And into a leg bar. As I said, Rick, technical wrestling is the thing for her. She is a technical prowess. And somehow Dahlia Black managed to escape it. Oh, a beautiful body press. Did not execute the pin. Instead, she's going for a head smash. More head smash. And this is part of her strategy, I believe. Dahlia Black came up to me this afternoon and she told me that she is absolutely nervous to be going back and forth to the academy and also on the main show. She wants to be the next LCW world champion. And she said that she's going to pull anything that she can to get it. Even if it has to mean that she's going to have to go into the dark side, so to speak, to become champion. I told her. I said, Dahlia, listen to your heart. But I know your heart is not black. So don't think for a second that you're going to do something stupid that will compromise the integrity of your professionalism. Especially the integrity of one Julia Sanders who runs things in ladies' championship wrestling. Stiff clothesline there from Dahlia Black. Looks like Dahlia's got this under control because I can see charge finishing. And there it is. Look at this. Dahlia now setting up Siren. Oh, a pump handle exploder-like maneuver 
Let's see that replay, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. It's a very beautiful move there, Johnny. And with nine and a half minutes on the clock remaining, Dahlia Black goes for the cover. Charles, our referee, slips and slides. Counts to three. This match is over. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this crowd. Unbelievable, beautiful textbook suplex from Siren. She got a very, she got a, she had a few good swings here in this match. If I would have known, I would have said that Siren has definitely impressed management and especially the administration here in the new class wrestling camp. And that's the exploder right there, Rick. That's the move that did it all. Our, our beloved referee Charles had slipped and slide, and, she, and he had made the count to three. Dahlia Black is our winner tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Celebrating with the crowd. She is definitely feeling it. She is definitely on the road to, put, to, to potentially become the next LCW World Champion.
This is our main event for the afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Wherever you are right now, thank you for watching. This is the NXT Tag Team Championship title bout capacity crowd watching on Matsuda Tanaka and Shingo Takagi. Ladies and gentlemen, some fellers from the from New from New Japan Pro Wrestling are here in the academy. They're part of it too. They wrestle here. They train here. And listen to this ovation. Listen to this crowd. Look at this crowd we have here on hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of all this action. Ryan Rage to the left. Bram Healy to the right. They are the Brawl Brothers. And they are the current reigning defending NXT Tag Team Champions. Look at this. Seems that we have some fan favorites amongst us here. The Brawl Brothers have been tag team champions in the NCWA for some time. They had won a tag team tournament. Now those very same championship belts from that tournament back in 2021 are now in the possession of Jimmy Generic and Johnny Miro. Here we go, here we go though, Rick. And I think you were right the whole time. The time limit for all matches are 15 minutes. Unfortunately, I think I think there was a mistake on behalf of the timekeeper. It's supposed to be 30 minutes. 30 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, for multiple people matches. But in singles competition, it's 15. So pardon the mistakes, pardon the errors, but hey, we were talking about mistakes and mishaps and things like that. It can happen even outside the ring. Management can make mistakes too. It's part of being a human being for big sakes. Well, I don't think these men are human. They are more human than human to take this kind of punishment. I mean, look at this beautiful body slam, a toss, more, more, more so than Bram. And this version of Bram Healy is uh, something else because Bram doesn't have any hair. He shaved his head. Underneath that hair is a tattoo. So for him to have hair on his head, no offense there, but he kind of looks like Sheamus. He does look like Sheamus, doesn't he? Oh my goodness, speaking of that Sheamus, I mean, Bram just smashed the face of Masuda Tanaka. Matsuda Tanaka, you saw his thing is his entrance. Real pays homage to the demon Finn Balor and also Asuka, formerly known as Kana. Look at this. Look at Matsuda now. Taking the wrist. Oh! I thought he was gonna smash his fingers or break the wrist, preventing Bram from continuing this match. Oh my goodness, look at that. Like a dragon-like sleeper, and yet somehow Bram was Matt was able to counter out from that. His back was completely curved, bent. The spine not supposed to do that kind of damage. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, on the air. That was our final commercial break for our program. Thanks again for, for checking us out here on, the, on, on, on YouTube. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Click on the notifications so you do not miss a match. Share the link to all of your friends, your family, and anybody who is associated with E-Federations. Smash the like button, post the comment down below. Let us hear what you have to say. Let us hear your opinions, your thoughts. We are open to anything at this point. Beautiful elbow strikes from Matsuda Tanaka. 
Ryan Rage now, ladies and gentlemen, in some form of deep waters. Those elbows were dangerous. Look at Matsuda. You've seen this right before commercial break. Those, those, those drop kicks to the corner. My goodness, this man is absolutely on fire. Tanaka is. Well, Ryan Rage better get it, better get his act together here. Those tag team titles are on the line. This is our main event. Meteora hooking both legs, and Ryan is power that. That's what I like about these guys. The Brawl Brothers are all about raw power. Yeah, speaking of which, that was power right there, just tossing Matsuda Tanaku over the top rope. Now they're onto the outside floor, and this is where Ryan Rage is a master. Series of punches, series of kicks. It looks as though there's more maneuvering to do outside the squared circle. Well, Matsuda's got his braids, his mohawk braid, or his braided mohawk, whatever you want to call it, whatever, however you want to say it. He's got him by the neck. The referee is still counting. Come on, gentlemen, get back in the ring. Matsuda Tanaka delivering um, knuckle sandwiches with no mayonnaise and no mustard. Just bone on bone action. Well, Matsuda is not finished with Ryan Rage, ladies and gentlemen. Matsuda gently putting Ryan Rage back in the ring, but partially delivers a kick to the temple, to the side of the head. Well, Ryan Rage is on Dream Street. Look how, look how Matsuda was skipping away for a super kick. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles completely out of position, and that actually did them. That's, that, that gave Ryan Rage some time. It's as if that Charles was deliberately trying to prevent Ryan from losing. That's the Kinshasa, ladies and gentlemen, but Brian Healy broke up the pin. This matchup continues. NXT Tag Team Championship belts are on the line in our main event of our Liberty Day weekend of Whoa. Shoulder block right there. Big back body drop. Matsuda Tanaka going for the ride. Oh, spine buster. What is Ryan up to now? Oh, that's a tiger suplex. And he had the bridge, but didn't lock the bridge. Could this be enough? Oh, only gets a two. Matsuda Tanaka kicked out of all that raw power. Oh, shit. And Matsuda looks like he's going to have... He might be celebrating pretty soon because I, sm I sense the end. That fireman's carry, and he drives the neck onto the knee. Oh, that'll pop a hamstring. Forearm smashes. Oh, a Pele kick out of nowhere. That caught Ryan Rage completely off guard. Matsuda now going for that corner super kick. He connects and almost rips the head of Ryan Rage. Charles in position. One, two, three. Well, looks like we got music. We got ourselves a new set of tag team champions, champions, and that's the NXT tag team champions. Check out this, uh, look at that, skipping away, skipping, almost, almost trotting his way, and Ryan didn't even duck. He couldn't even duck. He's in so much agony, so much pain, and that's that Kinshasa, a page out of the book of Shinsuke Nakamura. Beautiful tiger suplex, or a dragon suplex, excuse me, dragon suplex, not tiger. And even that was on enough. Matsuda kicked out, and now Matsuda and Shingo Takagi get to celebrate. We didn't see much of Shingo in this match, however, but both of these men have outdone themselves, have outperformed Brian Rage and Brian Healy. Got Shingo 
motion to Matsuda to get up there and celebrate with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all about the time we have for our show. Thank you very much once again for watching. For those who are brand new to the channel, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notifications. Share the link down below. Uh, 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 click like. Post your comments. We want to hear from you.